Next is orders. So let's go into an actual order itself and talk about the details, all the buttons that happen in there. Let's switch over to the dojo. Okay, so we are on our orders dashboard. We're gonna pick an order. Um, now you can click anywhere along the order line. Um, some of these order items will have little drop downs that if you click on them, it'll give you a quick view of what we're talking about. So like for example, call in love, we can see that they've had 13 orders. We can see their email address and their phone number and we can actually go and view the customer. Additionally, we can go to the items and we can hit the drop down and we can see which items they've ordered. This is useful. If you're trying to determine which uh, order that you're talking about, because the customer might, might not know the order number, it gives you all of the different options to be able to look through it. So let's actually go into an order here. All right, so now we're into an order. Now this page is, there's a lot of stuff going on on this page. Uh, it can be a little overwhelming. It won't be this complex when you start off, but remember we use some sample data, so it has populated everything in here. Um, so let's, let's start at the top and we'll go through. Right at the top, we have our, our order number. Um, if you remember from the settings one, I went and, and labeled everything Ecom Dash. So our order numbers in my online store is Ecom Dash 101020. And then we're gonna get a couple of tags that show up right next to it. Now, I'm gonna be using the word tags a lot in this course. It's important to understand there are different contexts for tags. There are tags inside of Shopify. There are tags inside of Google. There's in tags, tags inside of um, Facebook. They're all used differently. Um, in this particular content and context, I am using them in a UI fashion. Like this has just been tagged with payment processing. I will call out the differences as we go through, but I just wanted to highlight those for you when we go through it. All right, so we've got payment is pending. So this particular order, uh, the payment did not go through um, and it's still waiting for payment to come back. Maybe it was um, declined after a purchase was made and it has been unfulfilled. Okay, we have a couple of quick buttons. We have the ability to restock these items. So if the uh, order was canceled and we wanna actually put them back into restock, we can hit this and it will restock it. Uh, we can go and edit the order. So this has been uh, a long awaited feature from Shopify was to actually edit orders. They did not have it for probably close to a decade. They didn't have the ability to add edit orders. So that's where you would go and do that. Next under more actions, this gives you the ability to duplicate an order, cancel an order, archive, print an order page, print a packing slip, or view the order status page. This will take you to your website and show you what it looks like on the status page. So the, that last page you get through during checkout, that's what that's gonna take you to. Um, you've got some next and previous buttons. So this is where those shortcuts that I talked about earlier come in. So if we want K, it's gonna take us to the next order. I believe J is the one that takes us back so that you can use your keyboard to navigate through orders if you'll try to look through them quickly. There is a notification um, area that comes up here. So if there is a problem with order, for example, this one where the payment is still pending, this is where those notifications are gonna show up. They're gonna show up right on the, on the order page so that you can see exactly what's wrong with the order right away. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so we can get a little bit more focused. Um, next, this is going to be your next block or your next uh, place where we're going to be seeing information. This is the actual order page. So this is what was included in the order. This is what has been unfulfilled um, or perhaps what has been filled or maybe what's been ordered. This will change. It will say unfulfilled. It may say completed. It may say fulfilled. This is this status is going to change and so will this icon next to it. Um, you've got a couple of uh, options. Well, one option really, a hold fulfillment. If you wanted to hold it from your fulfillment center, and not process the order for whatever reason. Next, you have your products. So your products are going to list by product name. If you have a product in your store and it's been ordered, but the product has been deleted. So if say it was an older product and you no longer have it in the store and you're deleted, all that information for that product is attached to the order. It doesn't disappear when you delete the product. However, the link to go back to the product will. So as you can see here, because the product still exists in my store, so if I click on this, it's going to actually take me to the product. Um, but if I have deleted this Herschel uh, Iona, so I maybe cleared out that sample data, and I didn't clear out the orders, this link will disappear. It will no longer be active. So if you're wondering why it's available on some and not on others, that's the reason. Then we have our variants down below and any cart notes that were attached to that order. So cart notes could be anything from a engraving. It could be a, um, you know, a, 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 a final sale if you had some custom coding in there. We're gonna go into how those all work 
most likely in section two. We'll probably be uh, tagging a couple of the items um, as a demo when we go through section two. We've got the, the price uh, and times the quantity and then the total amount spent. Okay, uh, we've got some action items on this page. We've got the create shipping label. So if we've, if you know, we've captured payment and we want to go and um, print this out, we can go and create the shipping label and we can mark it as fulfilled. Now, because this order is a payment pending order, as we come down, we have the pending charges that need to happen here. So we could add uh, payment terms in here if we want to. So if we wanted to say, hey, you know, it's due on fulfillment, seven days, 30 days, that sort of stuff, we can we can do that. Um, or we can go and collect the payment. So um, because I don't have a payment supplier set up on this website yet, um, the, the payment enter credit card has been blacked out. Now, if I go and set up Shopify payments, which we will do in a later lesson, um, that will become active and then you can actually go and enter in their credit card information and charge it right away. Say you got their information some other way, you can say mark is paid. You can also send them an invoice. So sending them an invoice will give them a link so that they can go through and check out. All right, let's truck on back up to the top here because we missed a couple of cards along the right hand side. So, um, notes. So this is notes on that particular order. This is something that if you, you know, had engraving or special shipping instructions, or maybe you had a, a greeting card or something like that, and you wanted to add that note to that customer, you could go and add it directly into this order. Now, all, I think all modules, customers, orders, and, um, and draft orders all have the ability for you to add notes in there if you need to. Um, that is, this is different then the customer timeline at the bottom, okay? We'll go over the timeline in a moment. We have customer, we have the ability to edit the customer's contact information, edit their shipping address, or remove the customer altogether. Um, these are quick links to take you to the customer. So if you click on here, it's gonna take you over to the customer module. Click here, it's gonna take you to a search, which is gonna show you all 13 of their orders. So let's do that. It's gonna take us over to that dashboard that we just recently were on, and it's gonna auto search and give us all of the orders from that specific customer, so then we can go into those. Now, I'm gonna go back into the one we were on, we look at their contact information. We have access to their email address if we wanted to copy that. Their shipping address, say we needed to move it into another system. Uh, and their billing address, it's the same as the shipping address. Okay, um, conversion summary. So if, they were, if you have payments set up in multiple currencies, this is where that conversion is gonna come in. We will talk about that um, later on in the, um, in the page. So um, then we have our fraud analysis. If there was any fraud on the credit card, um, this is where that analysis will come in and we can go look at our full analysis down below. Next we have tags. Tags are, now I know earlier I was talking about tags in a UI sense with the pending and unfulfilled. Tags specifically on a order is a way for you to organize it. So it's just a way for you to tag an order so that it's easy to come back to. So say for example, um, as I showed you in the previous search, you might wanna tag this order, final sale. Now, because I've already used this tag in Shopify, again, this is that contextual menu showing up. It's going to give me an option to select it. Um, and now this tag, this order is now tagged as final sale. So if I went back to that view that I had, I could go and find it. One thing to keep in mind is sometimes on Shopify, you will have a persistent save button and sometimes things will happen and save automatically. So if you are like adding tags, if you're changing values, if you're changing things that don't need confirmation, there won't be a save. So a tag, it, that's it's as simple as just adding that they've removed the save button from that. However, um, if you are you know going to be editing the notes, you change the notes, then there's gonna be this save button. The save button is gonna show up. They are very specific with where they use save buttons, where they don't. Um, it may seem random, but ultimately it's designed to remove the amount of clicks that you're gonna be doing when using, uh, when using the software. All right, let's hop down to timeline. Timeline, this is just the conversation that you would have with yourself or your team on what's happening with this order. Order was delayed because of you know sh um, shipping problems or, f or uh, supply chain issues. We've sent out this this particular um, product as a as a good faith thing to the customer, so on and so forth. You can write all those things in there. You can have attachments. 
you can have uh, reference pages. So if you want to reference another page, so say you want to um, go and reference a customer, you can go and pick a customer and it will put it right in there. So it'll be a link to it. Um, you have mentioned staff. When you mention staff, it will send a notification to that staff member so that they know that they have something that they need to do. Um, and then we got our emojis. Everybody loves our emojis. So you can go in and post that. Now, as things happen to the order, Shopify will update this timeline. This is also one of the reasons why it's important to have individual users use individual logins so that you can track the difference between who did what and who did what where. All right, I realize that that was a lot of things to go over on just an on just the order page. Order pages are quite complex. There's a lot of things uh, to go over them. Next up, we're going to go over draft orders and we're going to talk about how to create a draft order and the options that are available in that one.